Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we're talking about one of the most exciting topic in the whole wide world. We're talking about LLMs, Gen AI, whatever you want to call it. Specifically, we're going to zero in again on RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. And the reason we're going to do this is because in the first video, and I will leave the link to the first video in the description of this video, I put together an architecture of various components in order to implement RAG and Microsoft Fabric. However, I was not happy with that solution. Number one, it was a little bit complicated with how, how many pieces I had to wire together in order to make things work. And number two is Fabric is supposed to be SaaS, software as a service. However, I had to use at least two components from Azure, which are PaaS. So I had to use Document Intelligence and I had to use Azure AI Search. The problem with that approach is when you have a Fabric workspace, you want to encapsulate all of the security artifacts there. However, in the minute you introduce things like AI Search or Document Intelligence, now the security paradigm shifts. You have to now think about how else people are gonna be viewing the data that you're trying to search on and who else is looking at it. So I wanted to find a solution that's fully encapsulated in Microsoft Fabric and I think I found one. A quick refresher on why we even are talking about this. Number one is we have to remember that most of the large language models are LLM. You can think of them as read-only. They're training on a data set that dates back sometime 2021, maybe 2022, 2023 for some cases. However, the, the model does not know anything specific to what's happening now, nor does it know anything specific to your particular company. Therefore, if you would like the model to provide some answers and provide analysis that's relevant to you based on time and also based on the context for your specific organization, then we've got to find a way to marry the power of LLM, power of analytical capabilities of this technology, but also have it talk to your own data sets. So how would that work? Let's say I have a question that I would like to ask of LLM and we assume that LLM doesn't know anything about what's going on. So I wanna ask something about, for example, my company prohibits and how we do certain things that's very specific to our organization. So the way this is gonna work is I will store a bunch of documents. So here we're looking at the slide. So I will store a bunch of documents in my lake house. They're gonna be PDF documents. Then what I will do is I will need to convert the information in those PDF documents into a database that I can search by asking it questions. And that database is called Vector Database. And then what I do is I ask a question, that question gets sent to the Vector Database that uses the PDF documents that are stored there to find relevant information. I take that relevant information and pass it to LLM along with my question. Then LLM reads my relevant information, relevant documents, it reads my question, and then it uses those two pieces of information to provide a relevant answer. So that's why RAG is awesome, because it allows us to use full power of LLM, but make it very relevant and specific to our organization in, in our time frame. Now, if I had to make a solution that's focused only on fabric, that's not using any past components, I had to find a way to remove my dependency on document intelligence from Microsoft Azure and also from Azure AI as the vector database. So it turns out that there is very solid options that worked very well for me. And let me walk you through what needs to happen to, to replace those two with something that could live inside Fabric. So basically what we're doing is we're going to Langchain. And by the way, Langchain is this amazing company that is moving and innovating at the speed that I've never seen before. And turns out that they are offering a bunch of solutions to all of these questions. And then as long as, you know, whatever is necessary to implement RAG or any kind of practical solution using LLMs that's relevant to business use cases, chances are Langchain has a solution to those problems. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to install necessary Langchain components. So here we're installing Langchain, Core, a bunch of other packages, and also PyPDF package, which allows us to work and process information stored in PDF files. Now, why do we care about PDFs? That is because in our lake house, I've created a bunch of folders in the Prohabits folder. That's one of my companies 
that I work with, work for. We have a bunch of proprietary PDF documents. So here I have ChatGPT information that talks about how we might use LLMs to generate some of the content specific to Prohabits. And then also we have Prohabits company brief that explains what company is, what it does, and how things work. So now that I have all of the components installed, let's keep walking through this notebook. The next thing is we provide all of the information necessary to in instantiate our environment. So we're using Azure Key Vault to store our to store to store our keys. Then we have the OpenAI endpoint, and then now we have two models or several models. So we have a model that we use for embeddings. This is the model is called Text Embeddings Ada 002. It's a special model that we're going to use to take our question and turn it into a number into what's called a vector, right? It's called into a collection of numbers that represent these words. The next thing is we're gonna have a couple of other models. We're gonna have ChatGPT model for asking questions. We're gonna have DaVinci 002 model for completions. We also specify the type of API. In our case, it's gonna be Azure, open API version. And then here we specify a bunch of environment variables that are necessary for us to instantiate those models. Basically, the way this works is when you create a model, you can either pass this information as parameters or you save this information in the environment. And then when the constructor is invoked, it's going to read these environment variable and instantiate the model. Here, I also specify that my files will be located in the Lakehouse default files per habits folder. The next thing is, and this is something that took a little figuring out, and actually, this is the biggest problem right now, is that if you're looking at a bunch of examples, uh, making those examples work in Fabric is not always easy. Sometimes they make assumptions as to which version of API you're using, which version of libraries you're using. So this is the hardest part right now, and that's one of the reasons we have not made this pub this notebooks public yet, because I keep trying to figure out if there's a better way to create this template that just sets up all the plumbing, sets up all the configurations, so you don't have to struggle with figuring out what to do with all those variables. In my case, I had to physically delete this OpenAI API base. I think Fabric somehow creates that variable by default, perhaps. So I had to take that variable out in order to be able to create all of my models. Then I do all the imports from the length chain. So here I import all of the pieces that we need. I'm not going to spend much time here because we're going to be taking a deeper dive in specifics later. Then lastly, this is where the fun part begins. So here what we do is we import our PDF and document related libraries. And now what we do in this function, what we do is we use the, we look into our, we look into our base folder, the folder where our PDF documents are located. We're filtering out for just PDFs. And what we do is we create an object or a data frame or a collection that has all of the all of the relevant information. So we will so we we'll see that when we call this function, this function reads all of the files, converts those binary. So PDF is a binary file, so it extracts the text information, and then it creates a documents object that lists all of the documents in the folder. So here it says, hey. I went through this folder and it looks like you have two PDF documents, chat GPT information and perhaps it's company brief. You already saw those documents before. Now I'm going to display documents and here I have two of my documents, right? And it says, and then I can drill in. So I have document name. And then if I click on each of those rows, then we actually see the text that got extracted from those PDF documents. Now that I have an object that stores the text for my PDF documents, I need to turn it into something that I could search based on meaning. So this is why a vector database is extremely important because instead of doing a text search based on, based on word matching, it will actually do a text search based on meaning. And that's what I want to do. I don't want to, to, when I ask a question, I want it to understand what do I mean by this question and find the information that's relevant to my question in the collection of all of my documents. Okay, now that our documents is ready to go, we need to vectorize it or put in a vector store. So how do we do that? Well, we have to create a couple of objects. We have to do a little bit of work first. The first step is we create embeddings. So we're gonna create our Azure OpenAI embeddings. 
And that will be a model that will be able to take our text and convert it into embeddings, or basically take the words and convert words into numbers. And what happens then is we have to create this text splitter object. So here we're saying, hey, we're going to be giving you some documents. And those documents, you want to chunk them based on 4,000 characters and then create an overlap. So what happens, uh, sometimes uh, you could do it by page by page or document by document. So what you want to do is you want to have a little bit of an overlap so that if there is a relevant paragraph that is on the border and the brink of this chunk side, you want to be able to make sure that it's captured and we can, we can take that whole chunk and pass it over if it matches our search criteria. So then once we have that splitter, we specify that, hey, we're going to give you documents, split them into chunks of 4,000 with 200 overlap. Then we're actually taking our documents object, we're passing it to the text splitter and we ask it to split. And that's going to create that splits object that's going to now chunk create have chunks of our documents. So now let's take a look at those chunks. So the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our splits. So now these are 4,000 character chunks of our documents, and we're going to store it in a Chroma, Chroma database. So Chroma database is a technology that allows us not to use the PaaS version of it or Microsoft AI search. So basically, this library here, the PDF reader and LangChain PDF loader are the, two are the two libraries that allow us to avoid document intelligence. And then the, the Chroma DB is the library that allows us to actually implement vector database search. So at the end of this line, we're now left with a vector store variable. Vector store variable will contain a Chroma, a vector database, Chroma vector database, that will now have all of the chunks of our documents converted into embeddings. And what's cool about that is because, because it's now converted into embeddings, that allows us to do search based on meaning and not just based on exact keywords. So here are our chunks, and then you could click and kind of see what those chunks are. And now we're actually going to be asking some questions. So here I'm just doing silly things. So for example, I'm going to say, hey, what's a nudge? So I'm going to run this. And then in this line, I'm going to actually examine what the answer is. And the way I examine it, so this is going to find all of the relevant chunks. And I'm going to say, just show me the first chunk here. So it's, it's actually showing me a piece of the document where we talk about a, a nudge. So it's looking for something with a nudge is. If I look for, for example, prohibits, then here we see the first chunk that has prohibits and it's talking about what prohibits is and some other information about prohibits. So basically in our answers object, we have anything that's relevant to the query that we ask. And now we're putting together the final piece of rag. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a chain where we're going to create some messages. There's some debugging stuff in here, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to ask what is prohibits. So now what it's going to do, it's not, it's going to take this question. It's going to use LLM to analyze the relevant information that comes in the answers object. So answers object is something that got queried from our vector database that is relevant to answer this question. But you see, this is just the documents. It's silly. It's formatted. It's not returning something in the format of the answer. It's just the, a chunk of the document that could potentially be talking about what prohibits is. Therefore, I actually need LLM to take this information and convert it into, a, into an answer that a human can work with. So if I run this, then it will run for a little bit and then it'll say, okay, what prohibits is? It's just going to answer it. So let's give it a few more seconds. And here's our answers. Prohabits is the world's first employee campaign tool that connects individual employees with their company's mission, values, and strategic objectives. So now let's talk about if my goal of making a solution that's full SaaS was successful. Basically, it's almost successful because there's only one pass component that I use, and that is Azure OpenAI right here. Everything else lives within my notebook, and I never use, have to use any pass components to achieve my goal. So what happens, just to summarize, we're using lane chain libraries to read data from our lake house, from our PDF documents. We read those files using lane chain PDF 
loader and then we save this information we chunk it and we put it into chroma db because this is our vector search then we query our vector search using Langchain and other libraries and because it's a vector database it allows us to search based on meanings not based on purely just the pure keyword search so what that will do is if i have thousand different documents in my folder it's just going to find the chunks that are relevant to the question that i'm asking it's going to take all of that relevant information and then pass it to the llm llm will read my question it will read all of the information that i pass with my question because llm you can think of it as read only it doesn't know anything about prohibits it doesn't know anything about your company however you in your prompt you can think of it that way you're passing the question and all of the relevant information so that the LLM can read the relevant information and then respond to the actual question that you pose. So I would argue that my solution is almost perfect because it does have to use one pass component. I do have to set up and configure Azure OpenAI. However, I would argue it's not as critical for me today to worry about because that component is, I think, what is read only. I don't have to secure anything around it. There's only cost mitigation risks that are related to this approach. Now, when I was using Azure AI Search, then I have to worry about security absolutely because A, I have to secure data in my workspace, but also whatever, but also whatever is stored in my vector database is now stored in Azure PaaS in completely different service, managed and administered by potentially different team. So now I have a potential security issue I need to worry about. Now, we got a ton of requests to make a bunch of the stuff public available notebooks. We will be making parts of this solution available on our blog. So I will have the link to the blog in the description of this video. We're actually working on a free class that we will offer on how to do Jenny in, in Fabric. We will talk about all of the different use cases that are a good fit for Gen AI LM in Microsoft Fabric Data Engineering and data enrichment type of use cases. We will also talk about scenarios that are not a good fit for Gen AI and LLMs and Microsoft Fabric. We will talk about the basic concepts. We will talk about plumbing and configuration. We will assume that you know absolutely, you know absolutely nothing about LLM. You're not a data scientist. You are bread and butter, Power BI, Fabric person, right? So you're either data analyst or you're data engineer, BI professional. So in our class, we will start from the ground zero and work our way up so that at the end, you're comfortable and you're inspired to use this amazing technology to drive for business outcomes that are relevant to your companies. But that's about it for today, and I will see you again soon.